the time has come and we're going to commence the gospel meeting this afternoon at Riverside Farm Kilkeel. We're going to sing the first verse of the first hymn on our hymn sheet. Jesus, my Saviour, to Bethlehem came, led in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful, blessed be his name, seeking for you, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Oh, wonderful, blessed be his name, seeking for me, for me. Now we'll just sing the first verse only of number one. Jesus, my Savior, to Bethlehem came, in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful, blessed be his name, seeking for me, for me, seeking for me, for me. going to sing the second hymn on our sheet. Christ the Saviour of sinners came into the world to save. Sing his glory, his worth, his fame. Jesus alone can save. No name else is given. Search through earth and heaven. Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone can save. Now we'll sing verses 1 and 2 of our second hymn. The Savior of sinners came into the world to save. Sing his glory, his worth, his fame. Jesus alone can save. No name else is given. Search through earth and heaven. Jesus alone. Jesus alone, Jesus alone can save. Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone can save. Works of righteousness all in vain, Jesus alone can save. His blood cleanses from every stain. Jesus alone can save. Now his work's completed. Now in glory seated. Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone can save. Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone can save. third hymn on our sheet on the cross the saviour hanging bled and died for you and me wondrous love oh who can know it boundless priceless full and free we'll sing two verses of this hymn and we'll this time sing verses one and three of our third hymn on the cross the saviour hanging Jesus died to bring salvation. 
to extend a word of thanks to all that have come to the gospel meeting this evening. Make everyone welcome, and we trust that you will be blessed for being here. Now, <clears throat> there's some announcements I want to make before I pray. At this time, usually we announce the sick in the district, those that could do with our prayers. You'll continue to pray for Clive McCullough and Bob Barber and Jim McNew and Linda Sharp and Rhoda Newell and Heather Annett and George Cunningham from Anna Long is now in hospital as well. Now, as far as I know, our brother William Bingham has made a good improvement. He has had COVID virus, but he has got over it well. And then also you can pray for families in sorrow today. We think of the Byers family that buried their dead on Friday in the town here. And then we think of the Dearmond family, Murray Dearmond. He often come to preach uh, in Ballykeel. He was actually saved in the wee house, hall out there at Ballykeel. He was saved through those words, it is finished. I always remember him saying that. So Murray was taken home to heaven too on Friday. You can pray for his family. And also we mention the Steenson family. Our brother Tony Steenson, who sometimes comes to preach, his brother died suddenly yesterday. And you can pray that they will be comforted at this sad time. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father in heaven, we bow again and we come to thee through the precious and worthy name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We do come with thanksgiving upon our hearts for the blessings of another day. We thank thee again for the Saviour and for his love and for all he endured for us upon the tree. We praise thee today that the work is done and the blood is shed. Christ died and was buried and now he lives in the power of an endless life. He's gone away and he's coming back to take us waiting, watching people home. We just come now to pray for this gospel meeting. We're glad to see a nice number gathered again for the preaching of the gospel. And we just pray that thou wouldst remember our brother today as he will come forward to the desk. He'll need help and guidance and wisdom. Make it easy for him to speak. Bring to mind that which thou would have him tell the people. Preserve him from saying that which is not of thyself. We pray that the power and presence of God will be felt here today. We pray that the Spirit of God will work and that thy salvation will be revealed to someone listening the meeting today. We just pray that thou wilt overthrow the power of the evil one and as he will try to distract people and take away thoughts out of their mind, we pray that his power will be withdrawn and that the good seed of the word of God will fall into good ground. And that there will be fruit today from Riverside Farm Kilkey. We pray that thou wouldst remember the gospel wherever else it's preached. God in mercy awaken and save sinners. And we'll be careful to give thee all the praise and all the glory. We've been mentioning sick people in this district. We pray for them everyone. We pray for these families in sorrow. We think of the buyer's family. <laughs> And then we also pray today for the Dearman family and pray for the Steenson family and we pray that they'll all be comforted and strengthened in this sad time. We leave now our requests with thee, praying for help and blessing and we ask all in the Lord's name. Amen. Now, <clears throat> just I want to announce that the speaker today is Mr. David McBride. And we're very pleased to have our brother with us for the making known of the gospel. Next Lord's Day, the speaker is going to be Andrew Barber. And we'd really love you would come back to hear our young brother make the gospel known. Now, our brother Adam is soon going in for an operation. And you can also pray for Adam as he will go through the operation. Now, our brother David McBride was reminding us that the last time he was here in this yard, the late Harold Paisley was preaching in the black shed. It's now got painted. It's no longer black, it's grey. And our brother was Paisley was preaching there, and Charlie Campbell and May was out in the yard, and their three sons and their daughters was here too. And there's so many changes have taken place from the last time our brother David was here. But we're glad to have him, and we now 
and the meeting over to it, and trust that God will come near and give help. The meeting will finish punctual at four o'clock. We're very glad to be here this afternoon, and we thank you very, very much for coming. And uh, I'll not tell you how long ago that is since I was here, but it's many, many years ago I came as a boy with my dad to those meetings. And it was a precious moment when we got to hear the gospel. And we thank God that down through the years we have responded to its message. And this afternoon we're here to open the word of God and to seek to preach this glorious message of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read four scriptures with you please. They're all found in the gospel according to Luke and chapter 2 first of all. And just one verse, verse number 11. <coughs> For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then chapter 23. <coughs> and verse number 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And back again to chapter 19, please. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 19. Verse 1, Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Uh, he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And then verse 4 says, And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And Jesus, verse 9, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as also is this, for so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. With God's rich blessing upon the reading of his precious word this afternoon, I want to speak to you uh, at God's help today concerning four days. Four days. And I want to remind you men in the cars this afternoon and women as well, don't forget what day tomorrow is. And I'll not mention it, but you should know it as well as I do. But I want to think of this first day in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. It was a day of tremendous significance. For into this universe came the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the eternal God born of a virgin and wrapped in swaddling clothes and led in a manger. He was none other than the eternal Son of God. And he came with purpose in his soul. He came to finish a work the Father gave him to do. And that was one day to go to a place called Calvary and there to die between the malefactors and to suffer what tongue can never tell in order that sinners might be redeemed and cleansed from their sin and washed in his precious blood. We thank God for that special day as well. But first of all, a saviour. This universe needed a saviour. It was in total darkness. It was in disarray. Men had sinned in every department of life all around, yet God looked down and he saw that there was none righteous, no, not one. God said that he would send into this world <coughs> his blessed son and down from the glory the saviour came and down to the cross and the death of shame the word of God tells me in 1 John 4:14 4, this afternoon the father sent the son to be the saviour of the world and if you're in the car park this afternoon and you have not yet received the Saviour, it's time you did. For time is short. Day is coming when the Saviour 
who came first of all in lowly guise. guys. There was no big fanfare. There were no flags flying. Into a manger the Lord Jesus came. He was given notice to a few shepherds who minded their sheep on the hillside of Judea. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. He's a sent Saviour. God sent his only Son in the likeness of human flesh and for sin. But yet with all this child that was born in Bethlehem of Judea was unique to every other birth. Because it was a a birth of a virgin. And the one that was born was sinless. Absolutely holy. And harmless. And undefiled. And separate from sinners. Not like you and I. We were born in sin. And shapened in iniquity. The word of God says. Wherefore as by one man. That is Adam. Sin entered into the world. Death by sin. So death is passed upon all men for all have sinned that leaves no one out this afternoon within my view and those who will listen online and those who will listen on YouTube doesn't matter where you are in the world today you've been born in sin and shaped in iniquity yet with all God looked down upon this sinful scene and it needed a saviour and he sent his well beloved son down from heaven's glory came the Christ of God, born as a boy into Bethlehem of Judea, moved as a boy in the temple at Jerusalem. The learned of Israel were looking for a Messiah that was to come. Yet with all we think of the blindness of the nation of Israel today, for in their very midst was the true sent one of God, the Messiah, the sent one. He sat as a boy of twelve. He listened to these old men as they conversed. He listened to their questions. He gave them answers. They were amazed and astonished at the knowledge that he had. Just a boy of 12 years old. Yet with all, not only is he a sent saviour this afternoon, but he's an able saviour. He's able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by him. Someone else has put a verse into that verse. It says, He is able to save to the guttermost all that come unto God by Him. Doesn't matter who you are today. Doesn't matter how far you're away. Doesn't matter how deep dead you are in sin. There's cleansing in the precious blood of the Savior this afternoon to remove all your guilt and give you a standing and a fitness to dwell in the presence of Almighty God, a sent Saviour. What a day this was. It was a day of tremendous significance. Yet the world knew nothing about it. Knew very little about this one that was born in Bethlehem. You know, my friend, we're down through the centuries of time. We're in 2022. Men still today have no time for the Saviour. Have no time for the Christ. They love their sin. They enjoy their sin. And they move aimlessly and helplessly through this sinful scene. One day to lose their soul and to die in their sins. Yet with all, God has provided a means whereby his vanished be not expelled from him. God has provided a great and eternal salvation. The second day I want you to think of, I want you to think of a day of tremendous suffering. I want you to think of three men (coughs) leaving the city of Jerusalem, going down through the streets of Salem, going outside the city gate, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. This is the very same one that was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Thirty-three and a half number of years he lived upon this earth. One man, one day men gave him a cross of shame and then led him through the streets of Salem. 
They left his visage unrecognizable as a man. They crowned him with thorns. They spat upon his lovely face. They pierced his hands and feet and left him alone to die between two malefactors. We sing with the boys and girls sometimes. Three crosses standing side by side. Of broken law a sign. Two for their own transgressions died. The middle one for mine. The man in the right hand and the man in the left. They had broken Roman law. They deserved to die for their sin. But the man on the set, I want to ask you a question this afternoon. You who occupy your vehicles, you who are online and later on on YouTube, I want to ask you a question. Who did Christ die for? Why was he on a cross of shame? Why was he suffering so much? Because of sin. S I N sin. Sin that will bar you from God's presence eternally if it's not forgiven. Yet with all, Christ died for our sins. Christ died for the ungodly. He suffered what tongue can never tell. Pierced his hands and feet. They left him alone. I segregate the sufferings of Christ on the cross. First daylight darkness. But I six hours of necessary for the salvation of mankind. It was three hours in daylight, three hours in darkness. And after the three hours of darkness, three o'clock in the afternoon, nine o'clock in the morning, he cried with a loud voice, It is finished. My friend, this afternoon, maybe you're troubled about salvation. Maybe you're longing, unwilling that someone would explain to you, How can I be saved? How can I get to know this Christ that you're speaking of? This Savior that you're presenting to this afternoon? My friend, the Word of God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Six long hours of suffering. You know, my friend, the sinner will die in his sins, and he shall be punished in outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth eternally you will never exhaust the wrath of God there will be no ease there will be no end but in those six hours upon the cross he settled forever sin's tremendous claims he finished the work that God gave him to do listen to what he says He says it is finished and he bowed his head and he dismissed his spirit. They came to hasten the deaths of those that were on the tree. It was near the preparation day for the Passover and they broke the legs of the first thief and they broke the legs of the second thief and when they were come to the middle cross they couldn't believe it. He was dead already. And a soldier took a spear and he pierced his side. And forthwith there came blood and water. I want to say to you this afternoon, friend, there is a fountain that's filled with blood. It flows from Calvary's mountain this afternoon. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. I thank God this afternoon. 51 years ago, the 6th of January passed, I trusted the Savior as mine. I took it in in all my need and in all my sin. At the side of a big armchair in three Rascon or Terrace Rothfallen in the county down. About 25 minutes past 12 on a Wednesday morning, I drank in the truth of John 3 and verse 15. Not 16, verse 15. 
that whosoever that embraces me, that embraces you this afternoon, irrespective of who you are, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Didn't see any flashing lights. I just believed God. Man, this afternoon, woman, boy or girl, can you not believe God? Can you not depend upon his word? He that believeth on the Son hath immediate possession, eternal life, and they shall never perish. I was thinking about a watch here today, but there's a big clock sitting in front of me here, and I have to keep an eye on it. I want to think of (coughs) the next day, a day of opportunity. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, a wee man we speak to the boys and girls about. A wee man calls the case. He had hindrances in life. He was small in stature. But he was chief among the publicans and he was rich. And he heard about this man, Jesus of Nazareth. And he sought to see him who he was. Wouldn't it be wonderful this afternoon if there was one in these vehicles just seeking Christ and longing to know who he is. You can find him today. Seek him with all your heart, my friend. Come to know him as Savior. Here he is. He overcame his obstacles. He overcame his hindrances. It says he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And the Lord Jesus was coming down the road with the multitudes that followed him in those days. And he comes right to the foot of the tree. I want you to think a wee minute. It was the last time he would ever see Christ. It was the last opportunity he would ever get of trusting Christ. And here he is, he's coming down the road. Let us stop here for a wee minute or two this afternoon here in Riverside. I wonder am I speaking to someone today and this is your last opportunity of trusting Christ. This is your last opportunity of embracing the truth of the gospel and trusting this Savior as your very own. Wouldn't it be grand for you to leave this car park today just to throw your arms around this Christ and say, ten thousand charms around him shine. But best of all, I know he's mine. Thank God he's mine today. It would be a poor world without him. It would be a poor existence without this Savior. My friend, I'm going to say we think to you today. You can live without him. I guarantee that today. You can live without him. But you surely can't die without him. Because if you die without him, you'll be lost eternally. Oh, embrace it today. Here's a man, and he was receiving his last opportunity. I want to close my message today with a day of salvation. It was a great day in this wee man's life when he met the Savior. He didn't get saved up the sycamore tree. It's wonderful. I've noticed this in recent days in my studies. That Jericho is known as the city of the palm trees. A city of darkness. A city of depravity. But yet with all mysteriously enough. God had planted a sycamore tree in the city of Jericho just to meet the need of a wee man one day who would come to go up it. He climbs up into his branches and he sits there and the Lord comes and he stops right beneath the tree. And he looks up. He'd never met him before but he knew his name. He knows you this evening in this car park, every one of you. Irrespective of your background or where you come from, God knows all about you. He says it's a case. He says a case. Make haste, there's urgency. 
I'm passing this way, never to come back again. Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thine house. He says, today is salvation come to this. When did Zacchaeus get saved? Are you listening now? Zacchaeus got saved when he received him. Have you got that? Zacchaeus got saved when he received him. I trust you will this afternoon for his name's sake shall we pray. Our God and Father we bow with thankfulness in thy presence and thank thee for all that are in these vehicles this afternoon and pray for each one of them. Pray for every home today that's represented we commit and commend them to God. Pray the blessing of God upon the salvation of some precious soul. Thy precious word that has gone forth, we pray that it will find an entrance into the hearts and consciences of the unbeliever and that someone will be led to Christ and trust him as Savior. Part us in thy fear, give us journey mercies, keep us safe upon the roads. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.